We'll start off by talking about per process profiling. That is to say, we're going to look at one particular process, you know, the one that we are working on. You know, it's our application, we're running it, and that's something that we want to look at. Uh, and that's where we'll start. The first tool that I'm going to talk about is Perf. Uh, this is the profile recommended for use with Rust, but it is Linux specific. Um, the Perf tool itself is an interface to the kernel's built-in sample-based profiling using CPU counters. So obviously, it's uh, that's what makes it Linux specific. Um, and you can use it per process, per CPU, or system-wide. Although you do have to be you know, the uh, root user for some of those. Uh, for some of those modes, but as an individual, uh, we could use it on uh, per process and that would be fine. So um, here's uh, a quick example of what some of the output would look like from this. So perfs that on this test harness. Uh, it was This was based on old assignment code from a previous offering of the course. Um, but the idea gives you, um, the idea is it gives you an, a nice breakdown of uh, what's going on. Uh, and you can use that to actually determine certain things about your program, whether you know, a change made it better or worse, for example. Um, so we can see you know, how much CPU did it use? Um, well, you know, a, a fair amount. Um, and there were 666 context switches in that time, zero CPU migrations, that's where it gets reassigned from one core to another. There were 3,791 page faults, you know, something we could hopefully reduce. Uh, and so of that, it used know, 24 billion cycles. Um, uh, stalled cycles front end uh, and stalled cycle back end uh, are kind of interesting. Uh, if we're looking at stalled cycles front end, that is, we had a CPU stall for some reason because of you know, a branch misprediction or something like that, uh, where we were waiting for a result. So we need a we need some data to be loaded before we can use it in a calculation, something like that. Stalled back end cycles has to do with there are internal resource conflicts um, with the uh, uh, CPU, you know, we need more floating point units than are presently available, and we got to wait for one of those to be available. Um, so there are 1.36 instructions completed per cycle, uh, uh, 0.37 stalled cycles per instruction, uh, and there were, uh, well, 5 billion branches, um, uh, which, uh, you know, we uh, mispredicted only 2.95%. So that's pretty good. Uh, and then at the end, the final is this is over a run that took you know, 6.58 seconds you know, of real wall clock time. So yeah, um, it gives you a you know, fairly nice breakdown um, of the overall performance. This is good for the kind of thing where it is something like we're doing in this course, where you know, there's a particular computation that we're trying to do and you want to get a, a result. You know, uh, if you are encoding a video, you know, we're converting it I don't know, from QuickTime format to MP4 or something, or you're you know, compressing it uh, from uh, the original 4K that it was filmed in to 720p, so you know, people can download it on slower connection, something like that. Um, that that's a good use here for Perf because it's not you know, long running, uh, and you're not looking at you know, what are the different parts of the program individually. We're just looking at, all right, here overall, this is how long it took, uh, and here is what we know. Uh, and you can tell if uh, you know, compressing the same video went better or worse after a change by looking at you know, not only the wall clock time, but you can also see, all right, did we reduce our branch mispredicts and things like that, um, which may be very helpful to us. However, we can dig into some of the details. Um, and the first thing that we need to do if we want to do this with Rust is to uh, compile with debugging info. So go to your uh, cargo.toml file and add profile dot, under profile.release debug equals true, which means that uh, when you build a release version, it builds with debug info. Normally, that wouldn't be the case. Um, because if you were just you know, building the debug version with the debug samples, then you wouldn't necessarily need or want the, um, the release version. 
Uh, however, um, when you're doing profiling, you're interested in what happens with the program, you know, in reality, you know, what, what will actually be shipped to users. Uh, and you wouldn't want to spend time trying to optimize something that the compiler is going to optimize for you. Uh, and so by choosing the release version, the compiler optimizations will be applied, uh, and therefore um, you get a more representative picture of what will actually happen with the time uh, that we are spending. We can uh, take a look actually at all of those things um, you know, in, a, uh, in a live demo. Uh, our basic plan is to run the program using perf record, which samples the execution of the program, which produces a data set. Uh, and we can look at perf report, perf annotate, as well as a flame graph. Uh, there's some guidance about how to generate a flame graph uh, on the command line. Um, the flame graph I'm actually gonna show is actually the C lion version. Uh, because during development of some of the code exercises, I used the C lion build built-in profiler uh, and it generates a flame graph for you um, and why do that uh, saves a couple of steps you know like generating the flame graph as an SVG and then downloading it and opening it in my browser and all of that uh, and you get the same result either way um, so first thing we'll do is uh, profile using perf uh, and then I will show you the sea lion side of it as well for uh, an apples to apples kind of comparison, uh, I mean, we can talk about the uh, in body uh, parallel problem again, just to give you some idea about um, where we think time is going. I don't think there's any surprises in this program as for where I think time will go. And you can probably at this point accuse me of like, this is your favorite program ever. Um, I, I mean, I guess, uh, you know, it doesn't make a difference. I could have picked anything and I just picked this one because it's the one we've probably spent the most time with, uh, over the term. Uh, and so it requires the least explanation. Uh, I think at this point, if I spent time recapping, all right, well, you know, here's the code again, you would be like, oh, not again. He's just wasting time, um, which would be better, I guess, than, uh, some of the other, um, some of the other programs that I could show you where we'd have to go over the code and talk about it and you know, discuss what does it do and uh, all of that. So let's get going. Uh, I mentioned uh, again, first step uh, is to um, edit the uh, cargo.toml to uh, see to it that for uh, the release version, uh, we are saying uh, you know, for profile.release uh, debug equals true. Uh, and now if I cargo build release, it will take a moment to uh, think about it and uh, build everything. The build system is, is quite nice, so you can't, uh, can't get too upset. Uh, but the important thing to look for here is it says finished, optimized, plus debug info. If I didn't put the... Um, if I didn't put the debugging symbols, it would just say finit release and then optimized. It wouldn't say the plus debug info. Uh, and if we um, didn't have that, we wouldn't get the um, the info that we need to actually you know, run using um, perf. So that that wouldn't be good. Uh, if that's missing, it means you forgot to update the cargo.toml uh, and therefore uh, go back and fix that. Okay, let's give it a try then, shall we? Uh, oh dear, uh, perf not found for this kernel. Huh. <laughs> uh, sometimes the live demo does not go your way. Uh, all right, we will uh, reconvene on a different server and, uh, and try again. All right, uh, we have uh, now reconvened using uh, EC Tesla Zero server on which I am certain that perf is correctly installed with the correct headers. Uh, and uh, I recompiled the uh, I recompiled the program. I spared you the uh, 10 seconds of me recompiling it as well as you know sw swapping between servers. So um, just the magic of editing. Uh, and now we can actually do um, perf record with cargo run release. Uh, and all right, that, uh, you know, in the beginning uh, prints out all of our initial positions and everything. So uh, it ends up uh, producing a, a whole amount of data. Um, so 
Um, up at the top, though, um, kernel address is restricted, right? I'm a regular user on the system. I'm not a system administrator, so actually perf can't look into where time is going in the kernel because that's like giving away too much sensitive information about what you know, the uh, operating system is and does and where stuff is in, in operating system memory. So um, under those circumstances, you are denied that information. Uh, you don't get it. Um, that's okay. We don't need it. Um, in certain circumstances, it might be helpful. Uh, it, it may be uh, useful if you are really stuck on a problem or you're really not sure why operating system stuff is taking so long. Um, but for our purposes, um, we don't need it. Uh, and so, um, yeah, for, for that reason, uh, we can't uh, look into the kernel stuff. Uh, and we'll see also when we do the flame graph, uh, the limitations of that. Um, okay, uh, so we have our uh, initial positions and then following that we have our accelerations uh, which have been calculated uh, relatively quickly. This is a parallel version in the time that I have been talking. Uh, and in the end, um, it says perf wrote up, uh, woken up 50 times to write data uh, and captured and wrote 16.6 uh, megabytes of data. Uh, and if we look in the... Um, if we look in the directory, um, we actually find that there is uh, this perf.data file and also perf.data.old uh, from a previous run. Uh, and um, well, I mean, if we look at perf.data, it's binary. Um, so it looks like garbage uh, as far as we're concerned. So we can't read that directly. Uh, we need one of the tools that will use it. Uh, and uh, one of them that we'll try out first is perf report which you have to spell correctly if you want it to work. Okay, uh, it gives you a little warning. It tells you about certain things um, and uh, yeah. Anyway, um, what does it tell you? Uh, hmm. Okay, um, please install perf uh, and our uh, installation here is maybe not that good, uh, but I mean we can see for sure um, that uh, a lot of our time, in, in fact, virtually all of it, uh, has gone to this uh, nbody parallel function. Uh, and um, if you bring up the help menu H, uh, it tells you what are the various commands that you can use to browse around uh, in your code. Uh, I will uh, try to remember to uh, ask the uh, EC uh, department administrators to uh, update perf so it works a bit better on all the servers and what have you, but you can uh, take a look uh, at what's actually going on uh, and see where is all of our time going in terms of executing this code. Uh, and um, when you break it down, uh, I chose the annotate option here, A, uh, we dig into our uh, execution here. Uh, and so we dug into the, um, well, the, the function uh, fn mute. The thing is that we've given the problem over to Rayon, so um, we're actually looking at what what is Rayon doing with an individual execution uh, of the code, uh, and that's why uh, up in the title it's core ops function impuls uh, blah 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 call mute. Um, so looking at that, um, it gives you a um, it gives you a breakdown um, as as we go through this whole function, right? Uh, you know, here here's our Here's our function, uh, parallel, parallel, inter uh, body, in body, parallel, body, body, interaction. Uh, and so uh, you have a line of Rust code that we wrote. So current point X minus other point Y uh, gets turned into the following uh, assembly instructions. And then you can see that you know here there's the uh, assembly instructions that correspond to that. So there's a move and a subtract. We have to load the data and then actually perform the subtraction. Uh, and same is, occurs for x, y, and z. Uh, for distance squared, uh, again, we are moving some data. We're doing a multiplication, difference y, difference z, and so on and so on. Uh, and that happens for all of these um, uh, for all these math operations. Uh, and then we can see you know, in the leftmost column percent, this is where the percentage of the time is going. Uh, and we can see that the expensive operations here are calculating the inverse distance cube uh, 
because you know, that on its own is you know, 22% of execution time where we are doing this, uh, doing the uh, move here and the division, uh, and we're doing the multiplication here where we uh, calculate current point mass times the distance cube, uh, and then calculating the current acceleration, uh, again, involves uh, doing the uh, x component uh, and so there's a multiplication, there is an addition, there's a move. Uh, and then you'll see actually that um, you know the moves aren't that different between the X, Y, and Z components, but the uh, X components multiplication there uh, and the add are much slower than the others. Any ideas as to why? Well, I mean, uh, certainly uh, one possibility is that, uh, you know, this is really the first time that we're using the current acceleration. So uh, we have to fetch it, and there's probably a significant risk of a cache miss um, when we're doing that. Uh, and then, you know, performing the addition uh, and performing the multiplication uh, necessarily result in having some extra cost associated with them because, you know, the cost of the cache miss is attributed to the instruction that uh, caused the miss. Uh, and then once we have a current acceleration ready at hand, uh, you know, it really isn't that bad to get the uh, X and, uh, sorry, the Y and Z components because the X component uh, took the penalty uh, of loading that in in the first place. So that's a possibility. Um, you know, we can look at uh, uh, at other uh, key bindings as well, you can see um, there's lots of different options. Uh, you, you can search for specific strings to determine if you think something is expensive or not. Um, you can uh, make percentages global versus local, so you can say it's taking this percent of the function or this percent of the program entirely. Uh, in this case, it doesn't make much difference because we're looking at 97% you know, of the program regardless. Um, you can toggle line numbers on and off. That's sometimes very helpful for determining what you're looking at, uh, particularly if there are segments of your program that look very similar. Uh, and so ultimately, like perf is quite interactive when we look at perf report, uh, and it gives you some nice stuff to look at uh, and really track down where is the time going, uh, even if you do have to do a little more detective work as to why. If... Uh, we dig into a, uh, a different function here, something we didn't write. You can see you just get the assembly stuff, which is maybe not as helpful, especially if you're not uh, an x86 assembly expert. Uh, we can also look at perf annotate. Uh, and perf annotate uh, is just kind of a, a little shortcut that gets us uh, exactly where we were before uh, and you know, sneaks us through the... Uh, Sneaks us directly to the functions that it thinks are most important. Um, usually I would say start with perf report, but uh, do what you like. Um, and then there is uh, perf stat. Uh, and uh, perf stat, well, I mean, it, it's uh, expecting a command. Uh, if you don't give it a command, then uh, what you actually end up, is, end up with is the system-wide stuff. So it's trying to keep track of everything it can see. Um, that's not what we want. Uh, we actually want uh, to do it on uh, our code for the in-body problem. So let's do that. Uh, and it gives us uh, perhaps a slightly less detailed version uh, of what we saw earlier. Uh, but uh, you get you get the um, you get the idea. Uh, that, you know, how long did it take in total? Actually, not that long. Um, it took about half a second uh, in system time, 5.27 seconds so actual time elapsed. But user time vastly exceeds that. Why? Uh, because it sums up the time over all of the threads. Uh, and so uh, the actual execution time of the program, because some of it was in parallel, is actually a lot longer than the perceived wall clock time of the user. Um, but that's okay. Um, uh, and there were 239 CPU migrations, which is actually quite a lot. Um, uh, EC Tesla Zero has uh, something like 28 cores if you count the hyper-threading cores. So they, like, there's really a lot there. Uh, and it doesn't surprise me that things sometimes move around because there's a lot of uh, places for it to go depending on what's busy and what's not. Uh, there were 2,240 page faults. Um, we accomplished about 1.35 instructions per cycle. Uh, there are 20 billion branches, which is really a lot. Uh, and there were uh, 5,866,902 branch misses, which is a tiny fraction. So although there are a lot of branches, we got it right almost always. So 
if you looked at that, you would know uh, immediately that there's hardly any benefit to be had by trying to improve branch prediction or anything like that. You know, there's no need to restructure your data to make it somehow more predictable. Uh, I suspect, of course, if we look at the um, if we look at the version where we uh, did the bins, where sometimes we use uh, one uh, direct calculation and sometimes we use the, you know, the average across a bin, we will probably find that branch predictions are uh, frequently uh, wrong in that case in a way that they're not in this, uh, because this program is fairly predictable in the way that branches are taken or not taken. So with that said, um, we'll pause here and uh, pick up again looking at a flame graph, which gives you some of the same information, but in visual format.